Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers on a very blustery, windy um, beginning of May 2020 um, day and it's, um, I don't know where you are, wherever in the world you are, but if you're anywhere on the UK mainland today, you will probably have some of those storms that are whirling and twirling around and um, oh, I'm not a stormy person, so if, if, um, if you like storms and you like being out there in the in the midst of it, then uh, good luck to you because I will hide away anywhere <laughs> where there's not a single draft um, to be felt or, or heard. So um, yes, that's basically me. So let's say hello to everybody um, who's here already. It's of course the um, needle felted <clears throat> bug in a mug, which is a, a, a ladybird or a ladybug, wh however you like to call it. It's quite big, it fits into my hand, so it's a good size and of course you can get our bug in a mug a needle felting pack which comes with the mug um, and everything that you need to make um, the bug. It doesn't have tools in it so um, you, could, you need to use your own and of course it comes with full color instructions as well. Let's just say hello to everybody because I'm a little bit early so I, I want to say um, hello to um, Rachel and Daniel. Um, hello both and uh, Sandra is there. Thank you for reminding everybody, give us the thumbs up. So basically like this um, live stream or when you're watching it later on and it's no longer live, then like it still and um, subscribe to our channel and then you get always notified when there are any live streams or any new videos that we've um, put on, on YouTube. Um, Alicia is here to support this live stream. So she'll post links and um, answers questions if, um, if she can. Um, there is Ashley there. Hello. Um, she's made it today. I um, hope everyone had a lovely bank holiday. Looking forward to the to this. Hope to make a bug for a friend. Oh, nice. Um, yes, Alicia ran a fairy Zoom session. So I saw lots of lovely fairies come alive. I'm sure that Alicia will do it again sometime in the future. So um, do make sure that you join the Everyone a Maker Facebook group. There you go. It's our group run by the makers, and on there we um, we we announce things like the the zooms and um, all kinds of things. It's always a good one, and you, of course you can post your makes and certainly post your bug that you have made uh, and share it with us whenever you're making it, even if it's five years in the future. Um, Carol is there, uh, and Vampire Venom is there. Kathy is there. Oh, this is from Columbus, Ohio. So this is definitely, I don't know, you probably don't have any storms today unless you've got your very own storm. Um, but um, I wonder, it must be quite early in the morning for you. Um, Alicia says she sees fishies. Yes, I've got them here in prime position because they're one of the future live streams coming up in um, May. And in fact, they're not next Tuesday, they're the Tuesday after. Um, we have got Jennifer there. Hello, Jennifer. Hi, Jane, Donna. Erica, Alex, Catherine and Laura is there. So let's um, get this bug on the move. If you get got your pack from us, then you will have had um, lots of red wool, some black wool and some white wool. In fact, if you make a bug like this, you need eight grams of the poppy red New Zealand merino, four gram um, of the stone sheep lum natural black and one gram of the bleached white Australian merino. And then you also need um, some... Um, this is slightly shorter, but you will get 20 um, centimeters. Oh, you can hardly see it. It's a, a thin black wire that um, we sell separately as well, but this will be in your pack. So in 20 centimeter of this, if you if yours is a bit shorter, that's fine too. And then we um, you need two black pipe cleaners. Now, mine aren't black, mine are brown because um, I thought it would be better to use these so you can see me wrapping the black wool around it. Otherwise, you've got black pipe cleaners and black wool and um, you can't tell the difference what I'm actually doing. So I've, I've, I've got these here. And then you need um, a pair of six millimeter bl black glue in eyes, which are at the moment tucked away safely. So I'll, I'll get those out in a minute. I don't want to lose them. And you need a felting needle, a coarse and a medium. <clears throat> and that's basically all you need. If you've got a felting mat, better still, you probably get away without a felting mat, just with a needle. <clears throat> There's not so much flat felting going on. So let's have a look at this little bug, what he actually looks like. He's got a... 
Um, so he's he's a seven spotted ladybug. That's the sort of most common one that you um, you find um, certainly in the UK. Um, we've had a little Maker's Weekend wisdom on this this uh, Sunday um, that was telling you some fun facts about ladybugs and. Um, it's it's actually there is not so much they're, they're really really useful and, and everybody loves um seeing ladybugs and i think the reason why they're sort of affiliated or associated with good luck is because um it's because they they're good news for farmers they eat they eat the the nasty the nasty bugs that nobody wants and um and keep the plants growing so that's probably why they're um a lucky symbol but that reminds me also that you can win yourself a prize today and it is the exotic mix which um works perfect with the fish that i've just shown you and um you can um win yourself that pack by giving us uh telling us what's your biggest bear bug so tell us what is your biggest bear bug and um put it put it in the comments of course this works also on um thursday when we are restreaming this particular live stream on facebook then of course it will be somebody else who will win it but you have got uh, two opportunities to win yourself this wool mix and i've got it here actually so you can have a look at it for real it is it is big it wants to burst out of the bag so let's have it spilling out it's lovely we do sell this off obviously as well so if you don't win it you don't have to be without and um it uh, it's just lovely I, I, it always amazes me how we can fit all of this in a in a small bag like this but um it is 80 grams of just sheer color bliss it is it i just i love bright colors absolutely love bright colors and uh, you can see the fish um, are made from it it actually makes 24 fish so you get um uh, four fish out of each color um, which is really good and of course if you are joining us for the fish then you will also need um, water soluble paper that's the only other thing that you need to make the fish I'll leave that here all looking nice and pretty so tell us what's your what's your biggest bareback put it in the comments Alicia will pick a, um, a, a random winner and on Thursday it will be Hannah who will pick a random winner so um, whenever you're watching this fingers crossed that you're getting um actually fingers crossed in german we we um we do this you say daumen drücken which means um 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 squeeze your thumbs that's what we say we don't say fingers crossed we say squeeze your thumbs so i was automatically squeezing my thumbs that's the same thing as fingers crossed so there you are. you've learned something new today as well okay right back to the bug so <clears throat> let's start with um the um the legs so you have obviously you have got um six legs on this bug so you've got two pipe cleaners and you need to cut um, them in half and then you've got four half pipe cleaners of which um three of the halves make um, um two legs each and um one of the halves makes the body so that's your four halves um so i'm going to use scissors because i'm naughty they're 30 centimeters long those pipe cleaners so i'm just cutting them at the 15 centimeter mark so now i've got one for one set of legs one for the second set of legs and a third for the third set of legs i'm trying to do my best to follow the instructions because um i'm notoriously known for making stuff up as i go along but that is just a sign that uh, needle felting can actually be done in all kinds of other um you know you get to the same end result even if you use a different method so i'm going to put the rest of the pipe cleaners away for now i've got a spare one here so ignore that one that it uh, shot into the picture and all i'm going to do is now and i try and do this and show you that as close to the camera as possible this is how you wrap wool around a pipe cleaner the good thing is that you've got that sort of dense chenille and these are luxury pipe cleaner by the way so um you you um you can sort of wrap the the um, wool around the pipe cleaner because it grips into it and you, it doesn't slither around but what you want to do is um see i'm already doing this wrong so anyway we're doing the head first so you want to start by getting a grip here into the pipe cleaner notice how i'm keeping my wool flat and then you bend the pipe cleaner in because that that now traps the wool and doesn't come off and then you just continue building up um 
the bulk for a head. Now this cannot be rushed. Don't get tempted to put lots and lots of wool on and just wrap it a few times. The more you uh, take your time um, and the more you build up this bit, the, the denser and the neater it will be and you don't have to sort of felt it down later too much. So if you've run out of wool, then just take another batch. I'm teasing it as I'm going along and I'm keeping it flat like a ribbon always um, making sure that I add another layer over the top. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And I'm going um, until I've got about three and a half centimeters in diameter. Um, that's the end point. But before that, I might have to needle felt this down to make it a little bit more shapely. And to do this, um, you use your felting needle, your coarse felting needle, and you just stab into the shape. I do this here at the base first because I want to bring bring the wispy ends um, up towards the head because we're trying to make a round shape around um, ladybird's head so I'm stabbing all over you can see that the fibers get sort of stabbed away and um, of course what you can see what is underneath here is um, is the our earth friendly felting mat and I'll tell you a little bit more about this if you don't know what a bear bug is um, I should have maybe explained that. So let's just have a, a little chat about a bear bug. So a bear bug is 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 sort of a, the biggest annoyance that you have. Um, if you think of something that's really annoying you, that is sort of the the um, the meaning of a bear bug. But the bear bug actually apparently exists as a mis mystical um, um, creature, like a like a an an, an ir irritating goblin or something like that. So if you look it up, that's what I did. I had to actually look it up because I've I've known the expression. I've never really thought about it. I use it, but I don't really know why I'm using it. So I thought I'd better look it up exactly for that reason, because you asked that question. So uh, um, it is it is basically sort of an irritability that you don't like. Tell us about something you really don't like. Basically, that's it. So um, let's go back to our bug here, which is not at all irritating irritable uh, or irritating he's he will be lovely he's going to be a friendly happy bug and um yeah do tell us about your about um there's another word for it i can't think of it now but um tell us about your dislikes what you don't like right more layers are going on top of that one um if you need to check the size and you work in inches or you don't have a um a ruler or um, tape measure or anything like that handy, then you can use our instructions on the left side of each sheet. You have a 30 centimeter um, tape measure going along it. So it's easy to just make use of that. And uh, usually we don't work in, in longer um, measurements. Um, so that, that's quite handy to have that. And I'm just felting this wool down as I'm going along, I add a layer, I felt it down. Doing it that way will make it a nice firm shape and you've got lots of um, scope to keep it nice and round as well. So that's, um, let's just check the size on that one. So I'm at about, I need another um, centimeter going on top. I'm about two and a half centimeters um, round there. So use a bit more wool over the top and keep it nice. I'm really t keeping it nice and tight so that if I if I now let the fiber sort of disappear into it, it doesn't actually fall off because I'm keeping it nice and tight. And then I can just felt down the wispy ends. Um, needle felting, uh, I've, I, only today I had to uh, talk about needle felting in, in a message. And it's it just reminds me how much I love needle felting. It is just such a wonderful, creative, and yet so easy to learn craft that um, if, if you ever had any doubts of your creativity, I, I, I'm a great believer that everybody is creative because um, you, you wouldn't be alive if you weren't creative. We arrange our lives every day in a creative way. So if, if anybody's whispered in your ear or a little voice in your head tells you you're not a creative, just tell it to shut up because it's not true. Everybody is creative. And I think with needle felting, it's so an easy, it's such an easy, accessible craft that um, 
people who have low confidence in their ability give it a go and surprise themselves every time. And I think that that's what I love so much about it. But also, if you want to take it to an extreme, you can. There are amazing creations out there. So whether you do it as a as a hobby um, and you just get satisfaction from stabbing that needle into the wool and getting that crunching noise and and just it's just very therapeutic um, or whether you you really want to learn lots of techniques and you're uh, mastering it and be, you become a needle felting artist um, it is there the scope is there but everybody starts in the same way so that, that is what I love about it too you just literally learn how to stab a needle into the wool, which takes about one minute, if that. And um, and off you go. Everybody can make it whatever they want to make from it. Right, so let's just check the size of that. Uh, yeah, getting there slowly. It could, could even be a little bit bigger, this head. So I might just add a bit more black over it. Um, so it's not quite three and a half centimeters. It's sort of maybe 3.2 centimeters if I want to be... Um, precise so just another bit over the top uh, remember that these tutorials they stay on YouTube so even if you are trying to make this along um, you can you can watch this anytime after and of course when you watch it after you can pause you can even pause now and catch up so it's not as if you have to watch this live even while it's being streamed live you can pause and then catch up so it's not um, uh, you, it can be at your pace. Right, so I've got um, the head, let's call that done. Mind your fingers when you're needle felting. Always remember going in in a straight line, in and out. And of course, if you're needle felting near a wire, then you have to be extra careful not to break your needle by stabbing straight into it, which is why I'm sort of always going slightly alongside it rather than straight into it. Um, and that so now I've got um, my pipe cleaner with a black shape round shape black ball here on the end of it and that is the first thing that um, that you're going to do now the next thing you're going to do is you've got your three legs here remember if you're doing this from our um, pack then you have th um, three black legs but what you're doing is you're folding these in um, by about two centimeters so you're folding each side of the leg in by about two centimeters and and the reason for that is that actually the uh, we're leaving the pipe cleaner exposed as sort of the end of the end of the leg now what I will there will is something I will say about these pipe cleaners if you're using um, different pipe cleaners not our pipe cleaners what you might find is that when you bend it and you have something exposed here um, you will see the wire with these pipe cleaners our luxury pipe cleaners you don't get that. The, it's got such a dense cover of that chenille on there that it, it literally, there's no wire in, uh, to be seen, which is why we love using it for our mice. Um, of course, if you if you are a subscriber, you'll get it with the pigs as well. So these little ends here, the little trotters, they are actually pipe cleaner exposed, but but you can't see the wire. And, um, and that is why we love using the... Um, these um these luxury pipe cleaners um yeah they're brilliant so i've i've got three sets here and they make each a pair of leg so i'm just going to have a quick look if people have worked out what a bear bug is and um let's read some of the comments here um this is when i um i get um i try to catch up with everybody okay here we go Oh, Alicia says the one in my hand, the bug in my hand has got eye angry eyebrows. Oh, this one hasn't got any eyebrows, I forgot. So he still needs eyebrows. So it must be this one. He's like, well, he's kind of, I mean, this is the lovely thing. You can give it um, uh, the expressions. And this way he lo looks a bit angry, but this way he looks quite quite che cheerful and chirpy. Um, and um, so we've got... My biggest bugbear, says Karen, is people who leave one or two sheets on the toilet roll and don't change the roll. Well, I'll tell you what, my biggest bugbear is if people don't leave a single sheet on the toilet roll <laughs> and then go away. And I, that happens very often in my house. In fact, I got so used to it, I always check there's loo roll before I even attempt anything else. So um, biggest 
bugbear is says Donna is people who don't say thanks when you have done something like hold a door etc I know what does it cost to say thank you just a tiny tiny little um movement of your lips um and a little bit of uh, effort on your um voice box to say thank you it doesn't really take up it can make all the difference um my biggest bugbear is people dumping rubbish in the countryside absolutely that is really bad in fact only recently i donated 10 pounds um to an action that was clearing up the countryside and they filled 18 bin bags just people tipping stuff over the side of the road absolutely awful and i, I felt like they did it all off their own back and then um the council won't come out to collect and then they've got to book into um the rubbish tip and they've got to pay all of that out of their own pocket so yeah, absolutely. I'm with you on this one. Um, Hannah says, my biggest bugbear is people not indicating at roundabouts and people not being polite in general. Yes, it's um, it's a funny one at roundabouts, isn't it? My daughter and my son are just about um, are just learning to drive and you should actually indicate way more often than most of us know you need to ind indicate. Um, My biggest bugbear is crafters not charging properly for their products. Your wages cover more than just the time to make the piece. You should be paying yourself th three times local minimum wage at least. So my biggest bugbear is crafters not charge. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes, because it sets um it sets a precedent, doesn't it, for those of you who are who are charging properly. I think there are quite a lot of people out there who just sell so that they have enough money to buy the next. Um, the next supplies because they don't actually need to sell to earn a living. They're just doing it as a, as a um, hobby, and um, it that can definitely um, make it hard for those who've got to um, to sell their time um, and not just buy new materials, but also earn a living. So yes, I can. I am always saying, don't ever undercharge yourself because it's also about respecting yourself. My biggest bugbear is people leaving the door open when they come in, letting all the warm, warm air out and the cold um, in, says Carol. Yes, I don't actually know anybody who does that in my family, so that's okay. Um, another bear bug says Ashley is loyalty not being rewarded. Oh, well, sometimes people don't realize that you're loyal or I always go by the, by the thing is that if you give something, if you're willing to give something, then you have to give without expecting anything back. That's what I always think. Um, but it's hard. I, I do get great grumpy at times when I think, oh, I've done all of this and I don't even get anything back. And then, you know, I just think, well, then maybe I shouldn't be giving it and just not not do it. Um, okay, so uh, Catherine says, my biggest bugbear is people not saying please and thank you, although not indicating or sitting on box junction or covering junctions are others oh okay yes not indicating that sort of indicating uh is people littering outside carelessly absolutely oh it we I, honestly and with these face masks lying about everywhere it's ah, oh, i know sometimes accidentally they can fall out of your bag but if that is the case that they, that everybody's uh, all these face masks that are masks that are lying around fell accidentally out of your bag i want to see some nice things that have accidentally fallen out of your bag <laughs> not just not some rotten old face masks so it can't have been all accident um so the pipe cleaner for the head is um 15 centimeters long because we had two pipe cleaners we cut them both of them in half which um gives us lets us end up with um four lengths of 15 centimeters we need three for the legs and one for the head and the body which is what we've done that brings me back to cracking on here um oh i've got some exciting news first of all so some of you hopefully all of you watching have had our advent calendar before in the previous years i think this is our fourth year that we're doing the advent calendar and um we are already packing um, even though you can't buy it yet, but you can buy it soon. And this is the exciting news. So let's have a look. Um, our advent calendar, if you've never had it before, contains um, 24 gift wrapped surprises and there is always an extra surprise on the last day. Um, it It is to do with needle felting, um, mostly maybe wet felting, could be doll making, but mostly it is to do with needle felting. So it varies from... Um, exciting fibers to accessories to tools to um, yeah 
that probably sums it up. And um, you can pre-order it from June the 25th. Now, it is, we have limited numbers and we tend, in all the last years, we've never then said, okay, we've so many people want it, we're going to start making more so that um, more can buy it because you would not believe the amount of work that goes into organizing any something like that. You have We have to think of all the projects, trying to think of new things that you can't just regu- readily buy in our shop. And then, of course, we have to wrap all these little um, parcels up and um, we sell hundreds of them. So we're talking about thousands and thousands of little parcels that need to be packed up. And then, um, obviously, everything needs to go in the box and then they tend, they get sent out by the end of October normally. So you've got them in good time, which then provides um, puts it in your hands where you've got to sit on them for a while and not get tempted to open them. We've ha- heard stories where people have hidden them in the way and couldn't find them when they were actually allowed to open them. So they are really huge fun and um, people love them and they usually just fly out like there's no tomorrow. So get ready for the 25th of um, June. Um, Be ready so that you get yours. Um, However, we do have something else up our sleeve as well that um, will keep you amused during the Advent time. I cannot believe I'm talking about Christmas at the beginning of May. But last year we had the McHoggies. That was an Advent project where you could make the different characters and with every um, character you got a little surprise. The McHoggies are still a product on our page, less the Christmas surprises, but you can make your family of four Hoggies still. However, this month, um, no, this year even, we're going to um, do an Advent project, which is a wall hanging. And the wall hanging is called animals in the wood and you will not see what it looks like at the end of it but you will get um, every week you get to open um, your um, little envelope or parcel or however we're going to pack it up to spend one week on the next stage of filling in your wall hanging which um, I'm not going to tell you at all what's on it but the theme is animals in the wood so that you can make up your own stuff about that but it is going to be big as well so it's we're talking big. Not, not tiny, tiny, we're talking, it's a wall hanging, so it is a substantial size. And um, and that will be released a week after the advent calendar. So if you like bits and pieces that you can be uh, creative with um, in your own time, in your own way, put them together or whatever, then the advent calendar is perfect. They're random items, they don't necessarily work with each other. Um, but if you like a project leading up to Christmas, which we support with live streams and um, um, once once a week leading up to Christmas, then your maybe that is your project for you. But better still, maybe both. Why why not? Let's let's do both. You've got time to save up your pennies and go for it. So um, watch out for those two exciting proje- projects. Um, the twenty fifth of June for the Advent calendar, and then a week later for the Advent project. Right, back to the bug. Right, so I've got um, one set of legs here now that I've bent the ends in. And um, and this is what I was hoping that the brown pipe cleaner will show you more clearly what I'm trying to do. So you have to pinch it a bit more and then you're actually going to keep about one centimeter or one, half a centimeter to one centimeter of the end unwrapped. So that um, in my case, you can see a little uh, brown um, end here. In your case, it will be black, but... Um, not wool. And then you're going to wrap this around your pipe cleaner as tight as you can because you try not to increase the size of the leg and you're going all the way across to the other side. If you have to um, start again, then um, obviously you can. What you need to be mindful of is that when you get to this bit, you'll be wrapping it in the opposite direction. Um, so that it might be good just to wrap to the center because the center bit is not is not so important. It won't be so visible. What I often do is, you've just seen me do this, I turn the whole work around and I twist the pipe cleaner um, to let the wool that I'm feeding in here and keeping nice and taut and close to the pipe cleaner. So I'm letting that um, wrap itself around the leg and I've got um, three I've got three attempts to show you this one done and two more to go so I'm pinching these a little bit more shut I've got my wool here nice and wispy ends get it established pull it nice and tight and then once you've got it nice nicely gripped turn the whole thing round and then just twist 
the um, twist the wool around the pipe cleaner right to the middle and then do the other side unless you um, have enough and you can go all the way across um, when you're just wrapping it in the same direction all the way across this way you will this it just means that you're actually wrapping in the opposite direction and then you unwrap it underneath so I'm just going to go into the middle which if it comes loose a little bit it doesn't matter so much because um, that's where the legs attach to the body and will be covered up altogether. Can you see how it's unwrapping itself because I'm going the opposite direction? So I'm trying to make it a bit there. Right, third one, and that's the last time I'm showing you this. Wrap the pipe cleaner end, leave a little bit showing. Once it's established, you don't have to turn this round like I do. You can go all the way across. It just really makes a nice, nice taut and de and um, um, yeah, just a really thin wrap. And I'm not needle felting into this at all, leaving it. And then last end, a little bit of brown showing, and wrapping the last bit so you um I, you should have three the same lengths i just noticed that one of mine is slightly longer than the other but that's okay it doesn't really matter because there's lots of ways of adjusting the size um so they should they should in theory all be the same length um i have got two pretty much the same and one slightly longer and then you've got your um your um, body pipe cleaner here with the legs coming off and uh, if you've got a shorter one then I would put that right at the base where the legs um, where the where the bottom legs are these bits here there that's where I would put the short one and um, so what you're doing first of all is so I'm going to put the long one on top and you're you're wrapping this around it once so that you just twist the length of the arms around it once and then you push it up um, so it doesn't matter, you don't have to put it in the right position straight away. And then you're using the next one, go round it. And you should have between the first set of pipe cleaner arms and the second pipe cleaner arms, you should have about two centimeters gap. So this from here to there should be two centimeters. So just hold it against your um, um, tape measure and then um, measure it that way. And then number three, goes on and that, that should also be another two centimeters so you can adjust them so um, make sure that you end up with um, equal arms lengths on on the on the pairs that you've got and then uh, you need to get rid of this end of the pipe cleaner and by wrapping this around the body and that sort of helps to secure the legs um, some more because you can go around the um, the bits that you've sort of um, twisted around the body and that will make sure that they're not moving. So just get rid of that middle pipe cleaner any old way. So you've got a slightly fatter center body here now and the arms sticking out on either side. And um, now we're going to start with the red wool um, around the uh, middle of the, of the bug. And that's obviously the red New Zealand Merino poppy red that we use. And you can start here at the top. Again, make um you know keep this nice and thin um, to start with certainly, and then you can go in and around the arms um, or legs or whatever you want to call them. They're probably all legs. Um, it's really hard when when you make something that's almost like a human character. Um, you you suddenly you start using phrases that you would use for um, you know if, as if you were making a person. But they are obviously, I would say they're all legs. And just get the first layer on and then you can start felting this down. Now, now you have to be really careful to not stab into the wire, especially as you're sort of at that um, first stage. And um, keep adding more of the, just tease the wool out so you've got nice strands that you can work with. Um, 
Um, so Alicia has just asked, what is the cost for the advent calendar? And the advent calendar is, we've kept the price the same despite um, lots of prices going up at our end, but it will be £30 plus uh, postage, obviously. So it's £30 plus postage. Um, that is going to be the regular price of the advent calendar. There won't be an early bird this year because, to be honest, um, they, they just sell so quickly that it's really hard for us to keep an eye on early birds or not early birds. And then people complain that they didn't get the early birds. So it's we're just going to have it all the same price. And then you just got to be quick, basically. So I'm wrapping more wool around it. And what I need to do here is I need to make sure that I'm... It's almost like imagine you put a nappy on, on him. So I need to bring these legs closer. Um, that I need to bridge that gap because they're right at the very bottom. So I'm going to put some wool I'm going to lay some wool around him so that he has there is a um there is red being built up between those two sets of legs <laughs> just think of putting a nappy on on your bug um and then that's that that should do it <laughs> I bet you've never put a nappy on a ladybird <laughs> no have I here we go and um and so you need to make sure that that um, distance here stays quite wide. So you want these legs to be further apart. So repeat that process. Now, once you've, once you've got the right width of, of him, which should be about, um, now that is written down somewhere, three centimeters. So, so once he measures three centimeters um, from side to side, that is when you stop wrapping wool around him, but when you start building up the back of him. So um, make sure that you get that width first. It does help to keep bending the arms in and um, up and down, but don't bend them too often. I mean, these pipe cleaners don't break as easily as the white um, um, extra strong pipe cleaners. The, the word extra strong refers to the fact that they have quite a high tension on them, so they're, they're not floppy. Um, they're not actually um, very poseable at all times, so if you bend them back and forth four or five times, then they do break. Whereas these pipe cleaners, the luxury pipe cleaners, are not as strong in that they haven't got as much tension on them, but they are definitely more poseable, so you have more of the back and forth bendability, bendability in, in them. So once you've got... I'm just going to check that that is about three centimeters. Yeah, it's three centimeters. Once you've got that width of the of him, then what I do, um, what I do is I sort of bend his legs naturally curved inwards because that's sort of more the natural shape of him. And now I'm going to build up his back. So at the moment he's a skinny ladybird, and building up the back, what you do is you take so four small pinches of the wool, like like that, that one more and then you lay them literally on top well you can lay them on top of each other in your hand first I find that the easiest and then you start you just literally put them on his back so that they are all nice um, sandwiched on onto his back and then you start felting them down around the edges so don't worry about them having to be really solidly felted on the back yet just get them down so that they don't fall off anymore and make sure that you keep that distance between the two hind legs. Hind legs? Is that even? I don't know. I have no idea how to call the autonomy of a of a ladybird. Probably should look should have looked that up. So get it on first, and once it's on, then you can start felting down um, the the sort of wadded area on the back, because you're gonna have to repeat this process a couple of times. So felt that down. And this is how you're building bulk up. So I'm just going in a systematic way from the from in that curved way, felting that down, doing that on the other side as well. And I'm still using my coarse needle. Now you do want this back to be nice and firmly felted. Reason is that if you start adding the black spots into it, you don't want to, every time you add a spot, you don't want to add um, um, a big indentation and then you've got to build up. Um, the sides or um, even it out and you end up with a flat ladybird so you do want that um, you do want the red to be felted down really well I'm going to do this um, relatively fast today but if you're not getting to the end of the whole 
um, ladybird, then um, it's best to take your time with firming up the back so that it's it's a nice firm back for the spots to be able to go on without making a huge indentation. Um, take your time in firming up the back. So don't worry if you can't put all the spots on. Um, that, that can happen anytime. I'll show you how to do them. And um, yeah, so this this is now it's it's definitely bigger than it uh, than it was, but um, you will need to repeat this process with adding more of these um, sort of what's onto his back. And it's the same principle as before. Just fasten them down by the side. Get them fastened on first before you're felting down the back. So there's a bit of a process going on. So the the wire that um, I've got here, the black wire, and um, we've had this question. This question has been asked before. This comes on the on the spool. This wire, and I have absolutely no idea how much is on there. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to measure. So that's sixty centimeters. Um, I would say that there is sixty. I cannot imagine there's less than 10 meters on there, to be honest, just gauging from how fat the reel is and how heavy it is. And um, just, you know, taking sort of one, there, there must be, I would say 10 meters on there, but um, that is a complete guess. And if it's, but I, honestly, I cannot think that there's t less than 10 meters on it. So <laughs> I hope that helps, but we do have to measure it. It just doesn't, the manufacturer doesn't tell us how much is on there. So it's something that we do need to ask them. And we've been asked that question before and we've plain forgotten that we still haven't found out how much is on there. But I'm can, I'm pretty certain, I'm 99% certain there's definitely no less than 10 meters on there, which is quite a substantial amount. So you, it will last you a long time. Well, it depends what you're doing, I suppose. But if you're only using it for antennae um, then or, or, or glasses for, for your little creatures, then it will last you a long time. Right, they're great. Um, that wire works great on uh, for for white mice glasses because you can see the it's a nice contrasting color. So you we're still building up the bulk on the back of the bug. Um, that's basically what's happening here. Um, always be careful with your needle. I mean, I I can sort of I stab into the wire, but I'm not really going very hard. So I'm 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 stabbing quite gently. At some point, you're going to have to look at the head of the bug because you want to make sure that the head is um, sort of connected to the body. So you might have to wrap a little bit of red around here and felt it down if that hasn't automatically happened. And there we go. So I'm going to um, add a few more um, layers onto the back of my bug. Um, you're probably going to do the same. In fact, that might for me this might be the last one, just so that I can show you how to add the spots. But um, if you've got, once you've used this, um, once once you're on the back of the bug, then you can use all the red you have got to build up the bulk. You only need a tiny, tiny little wisp for his mouth. That's the only red you need to keep to one side. So you can use all of the red that um, comes in your pack. And remember, I think I think it was eight grams. So it's quite a lot of um, wool that goes onto his back because it needs to be nice and firmly felted. So I'm just working in the direction of how the shape goes. So I'm going round and round. It's, 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 it's a useful tip, by the way, if you're needle felting anything, it's always good to go in the direction of how the shape runs or how you imagine the, if you're doing a bird, how the feathers um, um, run or how the fur runs. Not that that is so much the case here with a bug, but um, that nice round body is, is good to follow that shape as you're felting it down because you're just emphasizing the round rounded shape in that way. And when I get to... Um, Putting the spots on, that's when we choose a winner. So um, whether that is today on Tuesday the 4th of May 2021 live on YouTube or whether that is on the 6th of May at 7pm live on Facebook. 
which is the re um, um, what's it called the restreaming of this very live stream so and of course I'm wishing you all good luck with the, you're making a good luck bug so hopefully um, well one of you will be lucky two of you will be lucky so there, there you go. I've got my little bug. He he definitely needs fattening up a little bit more. Once you um, get to, um, once you've really um, felted this down well, you then change to your medium needle to um, make it a little bit more even and get rid of some of these, um, of these, what I would call pock marks. Bend the legs so that they are slightly at an angle. So, um, because you're going to have to do some work on his tummy um, later as well. We're going to put some black stripes on there, which is not necessarily an anatomically correct. Um, but it is, it's just sort of to emphasize that they've got sort of little scaly, little scales on their tummy. Um, right, I'm just going to go onto the big camera so I can show you what he looks like now. So you can see this is, this is the bug. Um, as as he is now, but actually the one that I made before has got a bigger a bigger back, and um, so does this one. So um, you do you could do with a little bit more work on this. I I have applied three layers of the wool over the top, so I'm gonna add just a little bit more, and I'm stabbing away. If you have got a three needle felting tool, use it at this point. It does help to um, firm up the wool a lot faster and um, it, it also um, makes it nice and solid at the same time. So do use your um, three needle felting tool if you've got one. I've got, normally I've got them all sitting around here, but for um, some reason they're no longer, which is typical. Oh no, there's the clover one. So I've got the clover tool and I've got the blue tool. Either of them will be absolutely perfect to um to speed up your work a little bit so just going to give that another layer um if you want to know what what's coming up next next week is going to be wet felting i'm very excited by this it's the first time i'm going to wet felt i hope that this table will withstand all the rolling around everything will be jiggling and wriggling around so i have to make sure that the camera is nowhere near this table which it isn't but even that it doesn't get pushed um and I will be um, doing wet felted flowers. Now we've got new products on our website that will support wet felting. If you haven't got the stuff at home, um, you will need some wool tops. I'm using wool tops. So we have a, um, an amazing wet felting starter pack, which um, also works really well for fairies because it's got lovely colored wool tops and also some bats in there. And uh, some curls and a, and a, a plant fiber as well. So you get an opportunity to play around with um, different fibers. We've also got um, a new wet felting mat. So this is um, instead of bubble wrap. If you haven't got bubble wrap because bubble wrap is it lasts for so long. Don't buy any new bubble wrap if you haven't got any. Get the wet felting mat because that will last you lots longer. And then you don't have to throw plastic away. Um, we've also got some handmade soaps. They're really special from um, a very traditional um, soap makery um, in Scotland. We've got little off cuts, which are perfect for sort of a first wet felting project if you just want to double at it, but um, or if you just want small sizes of soaps to do that anyway. And we have got um, a wooden roller. So if you haven't got a rolling pin or you don't want to use it and don't get soapy water on it, then um, keep keep something separate for wet felting and this one works perfectly especially for a small project such as the wet felted flowers I've got a couple sitting here um, there you go that's them um, so these are these these two sorry three they are are made from that where's the oh there um they're made from that wet felting pack, but this is not even using a tenth of the of um of the app. Um have I got yes, I think this is so this is the next live stream, which is the um wet felted flowers. All the flowers that you see on the picture hasn't even used half of what is in that um nearly 90 gram worth of um, wet felting um, starter pack um, wool mix and that that comes just with the fibers and then you can add into it 
the products that I mentioned earlier. So if you haven't got stuff at home, basically you just need um, some soap, you need um, a rolling pin, you need bubble wrap and a tea towel. So the, um, the tea towel you need anyway, we're not selling those. Um, or a, pla um, a cotton, a thin cotton um, um, fabric. Right, so that is next week. And then the week after that is the uh, fishes. So for those who are winning, hopefully, this lovely wool mix, they get it in time to make the fishes with us. There are um, eight different colors on it and um, they are quite 3D, the fishes. So they, um, even though you're using water soluble paper and there is a particular, we will have the instructions for you. There's a particular way of how you, um, um, what color fins and color features you're giving them. Are, are, it's slightly complicated, but you don't have to stick to it. You can make up your own design, but I, there's nothing ever straightforward with me. So I, I thought of, of a very complicated way of doing it, which I will share with you. And um, and then the week after that is the trug. So if you fancy making um, a woolen bucket with handles and you can fill it with vegetables either for your pigs from the subscription box, which are loitering here. He's um, interested in the chicken here. Um, I, these these are very photogenic. These pigs, I can't I can't stop playing with them. So if you see lots of pig images um, emerging everywhere, <laughs> I've had to stop myself from just taking the pigs everywhere to um, place them around my my garden and my house. Um, so this is the sub box for May, of course, and we're making the truck either for the pigs or if you want to um, make a truck for the ponies, which is the Dartmoor pony in June. You can make one Dartmoor pony from the June makers box. Right, little bug here now. I'm going to add the spots, even though I could um, put a little bit more um, color red over the top to build up his bulk, but I think I'm gonna run out of time if I don't do that now. And this is the time when Alicia is going to um, pick the winner. So first of all, you need to needle felt a middle line along his body. So this is sort of where you imagine where the wings separate. So give it a good, a good consistent stab all along the middle with your coarse needle making a um, making a real indentation in a very straight line there. It's quite a magic how it just sort of happens. Um, if you have a felting tool that just has got two needles in it, um, so with those three needle felting tools, remember they don't need to be three needle felting tools, you can just have it with one needle or with uh, two needles loaded up, then you can do that too and it goes a little bit faster and makes a nicer dent. So you can do that too. So that sort of separates um, the bug's um, sides where, the, where you imagine the wings to be. And then the first, um, I'm not so worried about pushing him, putting him out of shape here at the moment. Oh, he looks so skinny, it's make, breaking my heart. But anyway, it's fine for now. Um, the first spot you're going to put right behind his head. And I'm actually going, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to draw the shape of that round spot that I want onto the wool by just going in a circle on the wool. And then I'm letting the needle pull in. I'm just consistently going in that round shape. And I'm letting the wool pull in, um, the needle pull in the wool. I can tuck, help, help it along a little bit by tucking it in, making sure that I'm getting a nice round spot that sits right bang on in the middle um, on his back. There. So now you will find if you're adding the spots and you haven't got a very, a very solid red um, base to felt on, you will find that um, the, there will be indentations and we have got a winner for the Tuesday 4th of May uh, live stream, and that's Ashley P. So Ashley, what you need to do is, first of all, well done. Your bug brought you luck. You need to email us um, info at themakers.co.uk. Um, remember, the, uh, the makers has got two S's. And, um, and let us know that you are the winner today from, from the live stream on YouTube. So the second... The second um, spot I'm putting is if you imagine sort of just just sort of above the middle leg. Again, I'm doing this in the same fashion, going in a round. I'm, I'm drawing a round pattern with my needle and I'm going to let 
the needle pull in the wool and then I'm just tucking in the this makes a really nice round shape naturally and then you're going to do this on the other side so we're working in symmetry um, straight away try and make it the same size or as near as you can This is sort of, if you ever wondered how needle felting works, it just, it always amazes me that this is exactly what we're doing. We're just literally um, pulling the wool inwards with the needle because they have little uh, little notches at the end of the needle. Um, and it's those notches that are pushing the wool inwards. So it's making it smaller and, uh, and, and firmer. And then he needs a little spot on either side of his bum cheeks. So they are slightly smaller, those spots. So the, the, the three we've made um, at the moment, they're meant to be the same size. And then you're making a slightly smaller one on his bum. This is a, definitely a skinnier version of, um, of his friends. He needs to eat a lot more lice and whatever else they eat. There. And then on the other side as well. So that is then um, five. And then we um, adding two more, one on on the top of each shoulder. So I'm I'm stabbing these in, but I'm not going really really deep because I, I it is a surface cover. So we're not we're not trying to achieve anything other than coloring in the surface. And um, and then I'm going to give him a couple of small spots here on on the side of each, um, where you imagine the shoulder to be, if you like. And they're also smaller spot spots. And that makes him a seven um, spotted um, ladybird or ladybug. Um, one here and one on the other side. And then he's got his um, lovely spots. And then all we need to do now is are his um, eyes and his, um, his antennae. And then he's ready to roll. He can see where he's going. And I um, would definitely discourage him to go outside today because he'll be blown away like the little bug that was desperately clinging onto the um, trees earlier when I took a, a, a short video to announce the live stream today. So there, there he is. He's got um, one spot in the middle, one spot on either side here, um, one on his bum on each side and one on top of his shoulder. That's sort of how... Um, the spots work and um, and then to give him sort of a the appearance of a scaly tummy you can needle felt some black stripes on onto there that shouldn't take um, very long at all and keep them sort of slightly curved so you're just fastening them on each side and then just keep them slightly um, curved so manipulate that shape with your needle and I, I just put three on. Um, but it's your design. If you want him to have more, he can have more. It, I think it works best if you fasten on each end first and then sort of stab in the rest. And it is, it is just to give that impression of that scaly tummy that they've got. And then last one down here. And I'm 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 pretty certain that people will now say, oh, I can't catch up. I can't catch up. I do apologize for that, but I do want to show you the whole ladybird. So, if you need to rewatch it, please do. It stays on YouTube. Just stop. Even now, you can stop and um and just um slow it down for you, so you don't you don't have to watch it live. You can watch it in in a slower fashion. Right. So he's got his scaly tummy there now. Um, and now I'm going to give him his face. So for this, you need the white wool that is in the in your pack or um, a white wool. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to felt um, like you did with the black spots, but this time you're going to felt white spots first. Keep them quite nice and, um, and big because you need to have it um, a big enough space to put the eyes on there. Now the eyes are glue and eyes. And uh, what I love about um, making faces, especially when they're sort of stylized, you can actually make them, give them um, um, different appearances. So if you if you put the black eyes um, so that 
the there's lots of white showing underneath the the, the black eye then they kind of look a little bit sheepish if you put it right in the middle they look astonished or surprised and if you put it right down um right down at the base then they can sort of look maybe depending on how you position the eyebrows they can look um embarrassed or um what else? Um, they could look angry because you could make the eyebrows look really, really cross. So ooh, he's got a very wonky face. So I've got two eyes here now. And now I need my six millimeter glue in eyes, which I kept safe from earlier. Um, and uh, I've got a few eyes here. I'm actually just picking eyes now from um, a separate um, stash. But here they are, glue in eyes. And you uh, can use your felting needle to make a hole. If you have an awl, use that. It's definitely better. Uh, with this mind that you don't get yourself poked on the other side, push the needle in as far as you can until the um, fat part of the needle is inserted. Makes a hole. Insert the eye straight away. This is where you can play around. So this is where it's bang on in the middle. Okay. But if you wanted to look, um, if you want him to look sort of up at you, then go a little bit higher with the eye and that will um there it looks like he's he's looking up at you if you imagine that um if you want um the expression to be like he's looking downward which could either be because he's angry depending on how you position the eyebrows so he could be looking down um then then um put the eyes down um i'm going to keep that position now because I've poked so many holes in there. And then repeat it on the other side. I mean, you can have the eyes in different positions. He might just look like he's um, hangover or something. So, oh dear, one eye is smaller than the other. Okay, obviously didn't pick the right one. <laughs> I'm just trying to find the same eye. <laughs> Let's have a look. Um, okay, I'm just gonna, I, I obviously picked the smaller eye on one side. So he's actually got five millimeter eyes. Actually, that was the right size. Let's put that in there. So once the eyes are um, inserted, you don't have to pull them out again unless you make a, a, um, a blooper like I just did. Then you just need a dab of glue, which you are going to put behind the eyes without taking the eyes out. Just a tiny dab of glue. Squeeze it back in the eye and that will be enough to secure the eyes. And then you can make the eyebrows from your white wool. So the eyebrows is, is entirely up to you how you want them to be. Um, they Again, play around with it. You don't even need to felt them down to have a play. You could just um, put them down to see what it looks like. It's my favorite activity when we do snowmen, um, playing around with the eyebrows. So this looks, he looks quite cross that way. Um, you could have them higher up. You can have little bushy eyebrows. You can have very, very uh, nearly said manicured eyebrows. Very, um, I don't even know what the word is. Plugged eyebrows. That's it. Very plugged eyebrows. But get them on, the eyebrows. And, um, and then you need to give him a little red mouth. So get your eyebrows on there. Have a little play with the face. That is the fun bit. Um, getting the, the face on. You might sort of naturally find that you're making a, a, a nose by just squishing the eyes in and having felted the eyes down. And then just a tiny little bit of a, of a mouth. This is where you do need a little bit of red left over. Put that in. Can be a smiley face, can be a sad face, can be a, um, a round mouth. Um, whatever whatever takes your fancy. I've just given him a little smiley mouth. And then finally, you need to put the antenna in and that um, for that you poke a hole across the top of his head, like that. Insert the um, wire, just do it gently. It will find its own way. Um, and then um, what I would do is, first off, I would put a dab of glue on either side before you shape the antennae because um, you just need to secure it. If you use um, a, dry, a clear drying PVA glue, it should not leave um, any mark. 
um, we love these glue sticks. They're, they're, we love them not because the glue is so amazing. I mean, it's really good glue as well, but we love it for the small size because we never use large amounts of glue. I'm just felting around the wire a little bit to um, sort of stop it from sliding around. But I'm not going to shape the antennae at the moment because otherwise I'm just going to um, unlodge them again. But you can then shape the antennae however you want them to be. So these are curled in. Um, these are even more curled in. And, um, and that's basically... <laughs> he's got a very wonky face, this one. <laughs> Oh, I do love them. You can just see making lots of them, can't you? And then um, uh, giving them as a present. He's got he's he's used hair hair straighteners on his antennae. <laughs> very very long and flat. He's um, he looks quite mischievous. I will be honest. So I think he um, he could do with a bit of fattening up. Um, but um, he is he's okay. You can definitely recognize him as a ladybug, and uh, hopefully yours is not very far behind to this one, waiting patiently for his antennae to dry. So he's going to sit there for a minute. So I hope you've enjoyed this today. I hope I haven't forgotten anything to tell you. There's always stuff that I should be saying and I don't. Um, remember to um, tune in um, next Tuesday at 1 p.m. And if you're watching this on Thursday, then... Um, Maybe you can join again on the following Thursday or maybe you can join us live um, on, on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Make sure you tell people to um, subscribe to our channel, uh, watch for free tutorials. We've got lots of um, um, fun stuff coming up. Um, as I said, there's the, the uh, flower, wet felted flower, the fishes, the truck, and um, there's lots of other th things that are in the pipeline that I'm excited about. We will continue with some of the wet felting themes, so um, look forward to that as well. They're going to be small, really easy beginner projects because that's how far I want to take it, but I think um, maybe a wet felted soap, maybe a small vessel, and maybe a wet felted background that would probably sort of see me through um, my wet felting phase, but you might really love it and take to it. And of course the two can be combined. So that's always good to know. And um, finally, if you haven't got our um, amethyst, no, that's not an amethyst, that's an emerald, our emerald uh, fairy, then there's still time to get her all throughout May. She's um, a very elegant, long-legged uh, creature really lovely with this shining shining dress that she has got and this beautiful curly hair so she's uh, still available and our surprise box this month is themed paint a picture so um, definitely um, an exciting project for you to complete whatever whatever you make of it because of course there are no instructions in there so thank you very much everybody for watching have a um, lovely rest of the week and um, I will see you again next week if not before bye